All right. So now that we have, you know, our suppressor, vertical grip, and all that kind of setup, we want to go ahead and start adding a optic. So again, that'll be pretty simple and straightforward to do. So what we want to do is head to our blueprints folder and simply create a new actor. So we'll just call it BP underscore red dot. Inside of there, just like all the others, add a static mesh. And this one's going to be called, I think it's like the T4. Yeah, that's what he named the mesh. It does have a reticle, but we're going to get into setting up reticles in a separate video. Because that's one of those things where you have a lot more options and control. So it's kind of worth, you know, separating it out. So once we have that, really the only thing we need is a procedural anim component. Now, why would you have, I guess this potentially answer a potential question, uh, why would you have a procedure anim component on the optic if you have one on the firearm, like so? Uh, the reason being, they do a couple different things. Uh, one is whatever you're holding, so the root, in this case, which would be the firearm, all of those settings from procedural offsets and below take over. So all of these here are what is used with the firearm and this assumes you have an optic on it however when you have an optic the aiming settings are what is used so this is what allows you to for example pick up an optic off the ground and hold the optic itself in your hand and still have all the you know be able to aim with it have rotation lag movement sway and all that kind of stuff the procedural anim component is not specific to firearms optics you know anything like that it can be used on anything so for example, what I'm using it for in another project, let's say you walk up and you pick up a box off the ground, that box has a procedural anim component on it. So that way, instead of having to, you know, animate sway and all that kind of stuff, like movement, all your movement stuff, it's just all done procedurally through that component. So it does have a variety of uses and that's just how it is by design. So it's meant to be more on the generic side. Anyhow. With the red dot, let's go ahead and mark it as replicated. And we need to set up the initialize and aiming settings. So let's go ahead and set those to the firearm really quick for the initialization and go to it. So just like before, we're gonna have to have a new one, which will be related to a static mesh. So in this case, I'm just gonna call it optic. And the reason being the procedural mesh name is set as skeletal mesh because of the firearm. So we want to make it static mesh. Reason being, the red dots mesh is called static mesh. So if you really wanted to, you could name everything the exact same mesh, like give it the same name, and it'll work regardless of static or skeletal. Next up, we have S underscore aim, so that aim socket. Didn't mean to hit compile, because now we're throwing an assertion. Which again, like with everything else, it tells you what is wrong. So back in our red dot, Let's go ahead and swap the uh, firearm in it out for the optic. Then let's head to the optic, open that on up, and add a socket called S underscore AM. So in our case, let's go ahead, uh, just get it somewhat centered. It doesn't have to be perfect in this case because we're going to be swapping it out, and I'll show you how to make it nearly perfect. And I want it to be Y forward, so Z up. Y forward, and that's just due to the orientation because this is a X forward attachment, uh, that, and we're combining it with a Y forward firearm. You do get some different results, so this kind of corrects that. So now that we have that with our S underscore aim socket, we can close out of that data asset and go to the aiming settings. So we're going to duplicate that, and we're just going to call this one optic or better yet red dot so we might want to have different ones for say a magnified optic and we can leave these the same for now but we're going to leave it open and let's just swap that out so our aiming settings data asset is now using our aiming settings red dot that we just have right here so we have everything we need really it's just these two is kind of all that's necessary let's go to our firearm I'm not going to make a new attachment. I'm just going to duplicate the forward grip and rename it to optic. 
So this will be attached to socket s underscore attachment underscore optic. And then the default attachment is going to be the red dot. Okay. Now we just need to make this socket. So let's copy that. And like before, just simply add it to the firearm. Let's go ahead and move it up. And let's add a preview asset of the T4 optic and get that rotated accordingly. Try to find a decent spot to put it because the rear sight's kind of fixed in place. So let's see. We would, that's actually not that bad. Just over the, uh, the irons, that should be sufficient. Let's hit play and check so we can aim with it. And that is good and easy enough to actually see. So the only thing I want to do now is in our aiming settings data asset for the red dot is I want to change the aiming distance. I'm just going to set it to zero. So that is now our aiming distance. We're not having any additional distance applied to it. So. There we have our well, optic. And likewise, regardless of where we move it, so let's say I, you know, let me actually enable snapping. Let's go up by, all right, I guess snapping's not gonna, that's what it was doing before. And I have no idea why. It's like physics gets turned on. <laughs> so let's close that, reopen. Let's go ahead and I'll just bump that up by 20. That was the wrong axis. And I did it again without thinking. Okay, so we're going to subtract negative 20. So it's way up here. So now, even though it's way up there, you still bring the firearm down to aim with it. So you can kind of see the result. Here, like so. You know, you're still going to bring it down. So you aim with the optic. So at this point, it's just a matter of where do you want it, basically. Whoops, that would be plus 40, yeah. And then I did raise it ever so slightly. Don't wanna drop it back down. And that's decent enough. I'm gonna go up just a tiny bit. Okay. Save all, and that takes care of our optic. So that's kind of the core, I guess you could say, set of attachments. And attachments can have their own set of attachments, and those attachments can have their own set of attachments, so on and so forth. But that would be kind of a future video. So what I want to do in the next video is I want to go ahead and start working on the actual optic itself, and we are going to work on handling the reticles. So that way we can make our own reticles, as well as customize it so we have something better than this because this has a ton of parallax to it as well as when you're not aiming i do not like seeing the reticle there because it's not well, you're not supposed to so anyways that is going to be all for this video and i will see you in the next one